Hello, I'm Martijn Graat and this is Does Logistics Matter? A podcast on trends and innovations in supply chain and logistics. Answering yes to the question today is Arno Koster, Director Sales and Business Development at Ahlers. In this episode, we talk about the current supply chain challenges, the effect of the current geopolitical situation on freight movement via road, sea, air and rail between the east and the west, how companies are changing their strategies from just in time to just in case, and what companies can do to prevent disruptions in their supply chain in the future. Please enjoy my conversation with Arno Koster. Arno, welcome to the show. Good morning, Martijn. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, the first question I always ask my guests uh, is, does logistics matter? Yes, of course. It's a, it's a good question and it is a very uh, valid uh, question, uh, especially uh, nowadays. Uh, logistics uh, matters uh, a lot. Yeah. Good. Then you're on the right show. Uh, it's <laughs> exactly. always always a, a, a standard reply of mine because you know everybody everybody obviously says yes because logistics is so very important um so how how did you uh, how did you end up uh, working in logistics yeah so my uh, background is uh, uh, in uh, it uh, in the software uh, industry um, but also uh, always uh, in uh, international uh, business and mm-hmm. um some something like uh, 10 years ago uh, i worked uh, for a company who was uh, also involved in uh, international uh, trade uh, in the area of uh, telecom cloud solutions and uh, data center Mm -hmm. Um, and there was of course uh, already a lot uh, going on uh, especially with uh, companies uh, in the west starting their business uh, in the east yeah Um, so uh, that international trade, uh, yeah, that always uh, uh, got my uh, attention and uh, is uh, what I like uh, and what I like to do. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, two years ago, uh, I got in contact with uh, Alus, and Alus, of course, is uh, well known uh, as a logistics uh, company, but they also do uh, already for more than twenty-five years uh, trade facilitation uh, solutions with indeed bringing a business from uh, west uh, to east um, as a combination of course with their uh, logistics uh, expertise mm-hmm. so so this uh, this uh, uh, this new position uh, hit several of your uh, your sweet spots actually it was yep. uh, it was uh, activity in the east it was global trade and uh, nice yeah sure. yeah so uh, for today's podcast uh, 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 obviously, we uh, held a short conversation before we started, uh, uh, and uh, you wanted to uh, talk uh, about the current supply chain challenges. And supply chains are uh, are, are very much uh, uh, under strain currently. Um, so, um, what are the, the the main challenges that uh, that you see? Yeah. So, um, basically, what uh, what I see is uh, uh, there is a big uh, shift uh, going on. Um, as it was, uh, let's say, uh, always important in logistics uh, to deliver goods uh, in time. Um, yeah. And now, nowadays, yeah, of course, with uh, what is going on, um, not only from a geopolitical situation, but also what already happened uh, two years ago when uh, COVID uh, started, yeah. um, it's much more moving in uh, to uh, just-in-case uh, scenarios. Um, and um, let's say what the drivers, what the challenges are uh, behind uh, that change from just in time to uh, just in case. Mm -hmm. Um, That is what I would like to uh, explain uh, uh, a bit more uh, during this uh, podcast. And of course, also what uh, companies uh, can do um, to implement uh, those uh, new uh, scenarios. Uh, for the future um, to make sure that if there is a just in case uh, situation that the goods will be uh, in time yeah excellent subject so so uh, looking at look, looking at the largest uh, t- uh, challenges t- t- which ones do you see 
Yeah, so um, uh, one uh, of the big uh, challenges uh, is, of course, the uh, increase in, uh, in energy pricing. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, uh, the energy prices uh, increased uh, a lot. And uh, yeah, it is unknown uh, how that will happen uh, in the future. But um, that increase of energy pricing has quite an impact uh, on the way or uh, which um, a type of transport uh, uh, companies use. Yeah. And so, for instance, with uh, trucks, uh, truckers, they uh, normally do already uh, a kind of surcharge uh, on their transportation uh, yeah. costs. Um, and let's say to uh, with that to cover a bit the uh, fluctuation in uh, in oil uh, prices. Yeah. But now that oil, pri oil price is uh, going up uh, so much that that surcharge uh, truckers uh, normally do, uh, they do even more. And with that is typically what we see is that uh, transportation costs are uh, doubling or depending on the route, uh, route uh, even uh, tripling. Yeah. And, and the same impact uh, yeah, we also see in uh, ocean uh, freight. Um, there is, of course, uh, the impact of the oil price, but at the same time, um, uh, shipping freight uh, evolved uh, a lot uh, in the past years. Uh, and what, what we see is in a lot of ports, uh, there is uh, a shortage of uh, storage uh, space yeah. and a shortage of uh, port uh, space uh, in general. Yeah. And now, of course, with... Uh, the geopolitical situation and uh, sanctions where uh, ports uh, are closed, um, that that gives another uh, challenge uh, on top of that. Yeah, and some some ports are, are blocked. There are, there are th thousands of containers stuck in, in Rotterdam, taking up, um, yeah, valuable space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even uh, uh, most recently uh, in Shanghai with uh, the lockdown, there were also uh, thousands of ships uh, on uh, on the sea on the ocean uh, waiting uh, to get in so uh, uh, that that is also a huge uh, challenge and then maybe you would think okay we use uh, air uh, cargo yeah and because air cargo uh, had of course uh, always uh, a good uh, selling point uh, to to say to say uh, yeah we can deliver your goods uh, much quicker than truck rail or uh, sea freight. Yeah. But also in the current uh, uh, circumstances, um, uh, that that argument is uh, not always there uh, anymore um, uh, because of uh, uh, the sanctions which are uh, going on. Yeah. And um, also, let's say, during COVID and, and also nowadays, there are uh, much less uh, commercial uh, flights, um, passenger flights, and with a lot of passenger flights, uh, there were uh, was also uh, cargo uh, involved. So, also yeah, yeah people people don't know this, but a, a large volume of the of the air freight transported uh, across the world is not done in freighters, but is done in the belly of of um, uh, of of the uh, passenger planes. Exactly. Which, exactly. which I guess is is why as, as some uh, uh, airlines uh, make uh, bringing a suitcase so expensive, because they'd rather have a <laughs> make a make a nice profit on uh, on on shipping some uh, goods in the belly than uh, you know than than two pairs of extra swimming trunks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, commercial flights, passenger flights uh, are less. Uh, and, and during COVID, it was, uh, of course, uh, uh, very much uh, less. But, but now also it's less or uh, the route is uh, much longer. Um, and yeah, with that, uh, shipping, uh, uh, transporting cargo in such a way, uh, it also became much more expensive uh, and uh, it, took, it takes uh, more time. So... Um, that, that, that is also quite a, a challenge uh, nowadays. And then, of yeah. course, there is a uh, train. Um, had, um, train is still uh, a very good uh, uh, option. 
um, uh, let's say if you look at energy pricing, uh, trains are uh, four times more uh, fuel efficient than uh, than, for instance, uh, trucks. Yeah, um, that's a lot. That 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 is uh, a lot, and um, especially if you look in uh, in China, uh, which is uh, of course a big, uh, let's say, uh, uh, economy, uh, uh, the number one uh, manufacturer uh, of the world. Yeah, uh, China invested a lot in their uh, infrastructure um, to bring goods uh, out of the country uh, to export. The, the new uh, Silk Road uh, is a good uh, example of that. So there's yeah. a train uh, connection from China uh, to the West. Um, and most recently, uh, there was uh, a, a new route uh, opened from uh, Xi'an to uh, Mannheim. Um, but mm. also, um, let's say still, uh, although trains is... Uh, more uh, cheaper than uh, uh, than trucks. Uh, yeah, it, there is an impact on uh, uh, on the pricing because of the uh, the energy pricing so uh, going up. So yeah. you see that let's say with the different type of transports, uh, there is an impact on uh, on the cost uh, because of uh, energy pricing. Um, there is an impact because of uh, available uh, routes. Um, and it is a domino uh, effect yeah, because, let's say, the, uh, the logistics company uh, would like to make uh, some uh, margin on, on the transport. Yep. Uh, the shipper uh, yeah, who is doing uh, the actual uh, uh, transport would like to make some uh, margin. Yep. Then the receiver of the goods would like to make some margin. And then yep. finally, when your product... Uh, is uh, in the store, the distributor or the retailer uh, also would like to make some uh, margin. Um, and that now, yeah, is basically what, uh, what uh, yourself and what, what myself uh, notice uh, every day in the shop. Uh, the prices for the consumer uh, are, are going up um, uh, as, as a result uh, of that. <clears throat> yeah, so we're definitely seeing uh, the, the, the problems uh, in the different modes of transport and um, the capacity is uh, shifting, creating uh, first a shortage here and then a shortage there. Prices are going up, uh, but it's not only a, a, a shortage in, 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 in prices going up in transport capacity. Um, there are also many companies struggling with uh, uh, procuring and, and obtaining uh, the right spare parts, the right, uh, the right raw materials. Um, what do you see uh, for that part of the supply chain? Yeah, uh, indeed. Eh? So uh, with uh, currently the uh, uh, geopolitical uh, situation, uh, the sanctions, um, that has a huge uh, impact on uh, uh, the supply and the availability of, uh, of uh, raw materials. So uh, um, and a good example of that is, uh, for instance, uh, wheat. Yeah, which is uh, one of the biggest export uh, product for uh, for Russia, for uh, Ukraine. Yeah, for um, Ukraine, yeah. And yeah, uh, there is not much uh, wheat uh, coming out of those uh, countries uh, at the moment. Um, so what we see there is indeed uh, a shift in uh, supply uh, wheat uh, coming now more from uh, Canada. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as you can uh, understand, uh, bringing it from Canada to Europe takes more time. Uh, the route is much uh, longer and um, the availability of wheat uh, in Canada is, is much less than uh, we had uh, with uh, Ukraine or uh, Russia. So, uh, and that, let's say as an end result, um, if we go to the supermarket uh, or to the bakery, uh, bread will uh, be much more expensive than, uh, let's say, uh, two years ago. Yeah, um, and you say supermarket, and it's not like companies, like, you know, if supermarket A doesn't have it, I'm just going to go to supermarket B because they will have it. It's it's not a... And, 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 and with things like wheat, that it, it has to grow. So yeah. 
um, so maybe uh, uh, Canada can for sure, um, you know, they, they maybe they could solve a large part of the problem. But these farmers, they need time to switch their crops to uh, to wheat, yeah. and then it needs to grow and it needs to be harvested. So, so I'm guessing that um, uh, when you talk about switching suppliers, um, yeah, that's in, in many cases that's not something that you that you can just do. No, exactly. Um, that takes time. Uh, yeah, exactly as you mentioned, uh, wheat uh, need, uh, takes time uh, to grow. Um, and um, another a good example uh, is, uh, for instance, with uh, oil uh, or gas, uh, yeah, especially that gas uh, coming uh, in the future from uh, from maybe the US. Indeed, mm -hmm. they also need uh, to prepare. So they need to build uh, power plants. Uh, they need to be built uh, ships uh, yeah. to transport uh, the gas uh, to Europe. Um, that all takes time, um, and let's say that is the other thing what I see with, uh, or what I uh, would recommend, uh, and and what is needed, um, is for companies uh, to make a very good uh, short-term and uh, long-term planning, and uh, that short-term planning and long-term planning uh, has to do with um, what is going on, uh, let's say. Uh, in relation to uh, logistics, mm -hmm. uh, to b to be uh, to have your products uh, there in time, but also let's say with the uh, just uh, in case uh, scenario, and for instance, in that just in case scenario could be how long uh, will the sanctions uh, 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 continue? Nobody knows uh, which uh, no. sanctions uh, will maybe stop. Uh, rather quickly or maybe not. Uh, what will the oil, oil uh, pricing do? So, um, and on top of that, uh, as just mentioned, uh, the availability of, uh, uh, of products. And wheat is a good example. Uh, gas is a good example. Mm -hmm. um, there is, for instance, also uh, palladium. Palladium is yep. used uh, a lot in uh, jewelry or uh, 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 at the dentist yeah, for uh, yeah. the construction in your teeth, uh, so to say, but yes, uh, which important. is now uh, uh, coming more from uh, Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is a shift in supply. Uh, there is a shift in uh, logistics, um, and companies would like to deliver in time, and. Um, you need to take care uh, into consideration availability, uh, transport uh, time, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and a lot of unknowns. Uh, yeah, cost. according to uh, to sanctions or even according to uh, financial uh, transactions. I mean, uh, goods also needs to be paid. Um, yeah. So, so what 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 approach uh, what approach should companies take when they when they want to um, look at their uh, when they want to look at their their uh, options when they want to look at their supply chain when they when they want to switch uh, their focus more from uh, just in time or or maybe in logistics to make it broader we we should say just on time uh, that the focus is on getting the stuff there on time uh, to to focusing on uh, the resiliency of their supply chain and 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 what you mentioned just in case uh, yeah. uh, logistics w what steps should they sh uh, could they take yeah so um, basically the first step uh, to do is uh, uh, to analyze uh, very well the uh, supply chain um, so the supply chain uh, processes, uh, what uh, the company uh, currently uh, has in place. Um, mm -hmm. And in that supply chain uh, analysis, uh, of course, um, data, the data analytics uh, is, uh, is very important uh, to see uh, according to, uh, to pricing, uh, lead times, uh, transport times, and yeah. uh, where the, the sourcing is uh, is coming from, and yeah, the uh, amount of data available to companies is huge. They they have a, 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 a stacks and stacks of data themselves, but there's also a lot of very valuable external data that they could uh, use and and combine with their uh, with their internal data as well. 
Exactly. Yeah. So um, have we uh, at Alers, uh, we have a very strong uh, data analytics uh, solution, um, mm -hmm. which uh, of course companies uh, can help a lot um, with their uh, supply chain uh, analytics, uh, mm -hmm. with, which they can uh, save a lot of time and, uh, and money uh, in their future uh, long-term and short-term uh, planning. So yeah, you're, you're talking now about uh, uh, the supply chain analytics using a, a digital twin, yeah. um, which I talked about with uh, your colleague, uh, Miguel van As. Um, so so uh, uh, listeners that are uh, that want to know more about uh, the digital twin should definitely um, listen to uh, earlier uh, to the earlier episodes uh, I did on uh, uh, with Miguel on uh, on uh, the digital twin. Yeah. Um, so uh, so then uh, they have uh, pooled their data and then they can run uh, all sorts of scenarios. So the scenario uh, sanctions will be long or the scenario the port is blocked for a long time or what happens if it's uh, only a short time and there's a new problem yep. so it's it's those those types of uh, uh, disruptions that that you can um, plan for uh, and 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 run in in this tool right yeah exactly exactly so mm -hmm. that uh, the data analytics uh, in the tool that gives a very clear uh, overview of uh, uh, of the um, uh, the current uh, uh, situation and uh, yep. with uh, what you could do uh, for the future um, to make sure that uh, the supply chain is uh, cost effective, efficient, and that you can step in to uh, just in case scenarios with uh, whatever uh, can happen uh, uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing uh, I said, uh, analyze the uh, supply chain. Uh, yep. The second part, what uh, what companies uh, can do, um, of course, uh, because yeah, business uh, the show must go on, uh, is look yeah. for uh, new uh, areas. Um, so new areas where they uh, can uh, start their business or where they uh, can uh, expand uh, their business. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, what we see uh, uh, in the past. Uh, uh, two months is uh, there is a lot uh, uh, attraction, a lot of interest uh, for companies uh, doing their business uh, towards uh, China. Um, yeah. China is, of course, uh, a big country with uh, a big population and a huge uh, business opportunity. Yeah, it's the, uh, the biggest market in the world. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, and um, Especially, let's say, with uh, the Alice Trade Facilitation uh, Solutions, um, with our expertise uh, of being in China already for uh, 20 years, uh, we can help uh, those companies uh, very well with uh, starting or uh, expanding the business uh, locally. So with that, uh, taking care of uh, a good supply chain uh, to bring the, the goods from uh, west uh, to east, but mm -hmm. also do all the uh, local uh, back office uh, functions for uh, order handling, local distribution, invoicing, collecting the money. Um, yeah. so that what you normally would do uh, with having your own legal entity or your own uh, office in uh, China, um, we say it's not needed you focus on uh, what you can do uh, very well is uh, manufacture a product and sell a product uh, and yeah. everything uh, in between um, uh, we do for you. Uh, we, we bring the product uh, to China, bring it to your customer, taking care of invoicing, accounting, so that you are fully compliant uh, doing business in, uh, in a country like uh, China. Yeah, so and, and and China is known as the 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 factory of the world. So so w one might think, uh, well, every, everything is produced there. So these guys in China, they don't need anything because they're they're producing everything. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but but that's very much not true. A lot of what they produce there um, uh, goes out of China, and there's actually uh, a large demand for uh, products that come from the West. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you look. Uh for instance, uh, uh, Italy. 
So Italy is a lot uh, uh, exporting towards China uh, products in uh, cosmetics, in textile, uh, clothing, uh, footwear. Mm -hmm. um, from, uh, let's say, my, my own uh, country, the Netherlands, uh, a lot of uh, food uh, or, um, and, and even food for uh, animals is uh, exported to, uh, to China. Yeah. Um, uh, even electronics uh, is a lot coming uh, uh, from uh, outside uh, China, uh, for instance, from uh, Germany. So uh, stone, glass uh, is exported a lot uh, from Switzerland mm. towards China. So, of course, China uh, is uh, a big, uh, let's say, factory uh, in the world. But uh, they also still uh, import uh, a lot. And uh, with that, uh, let's say for uh, international companies, there are uh, huge uh, business opportunities uh, uh, in China itself. Yeah, the biggest store in the world then also to, uh, to put your, I mean, to sell your goods in. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so, so we, we, uh, you spoke about uh, disruptions. Um, you've uh, given... Um, companies uh, advice on on what steps they can take to um, uh, to make their supply chains more resilient. Um, I really liked your uh, uh, reframing of the the term uh, just in time to just in case. Um, so, uh, do you have a, um, a final uh, piece of advice uh, for companies that say, yeah, we need to move uh, in the just in case direction? Yeah, exact, yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, have a good uh, uh, look at your uh, uh, current supply chain. Mm -hmm. um, have a good look uh, at uh, our data analytics uh, solution um, who can help you uh, with your uh, supply chain uh, analytics. And um, together uh, with you, we can prepare uh, uh, a plan for uh, short term and, uh, and long term from uh, a supply chain logistics uh, perspective and from a business uh, perspective uh, with our trade facilitation solutions uh, we can help you uh, to enter or uh, to extend in, uh, in markets such as uh, for instance China um, so yeah we are ready uh, uh, to help and uh, as we say um, solutions uh, beyond uh, logistics uh, that that is indeed uh, of course what we what we do already uh, for many many years but uh, it is maybe more important uh, uh, now than uh, ever before uh, because yeah there is a lot of uh, uncertainty uh, going on where uh, our specialism uh, can help good um arno thank you very much for um uh, sharing your knowledge with us today um, it yeah. was uh, it was great having you on the show. Thank you, thank you for uh, inviting me, and uh, looking forward to uh, to the next time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Does Logistics Matter? For more on trends and innovations in supply chain and logistics, visit our blog at www.logisticsmatter.com. This podcast was produced by Dimitri Vleugel. The music is based on a sample by Ruggerman and produced by Michael Spengler. This episode was sponsored by Ahlers. For more than 110 years, Ahlers has been helping clients all over the world. Active in three regions, Europe, CIS and Asia, they provide state-of-the-art logistics and tailor-made solutions. Their services focus on supply chain solutions, warehousing, project and machinery logistics, secure transportation of high value and or theft sensitive goods, trade facilitation and after sales services and supply chain data analytics. Allers finds the best solutions that fit the customer profile perfectly. They enable customers to stay focused on their core business and manage innovative supply chain solutions which add value. They solve supply chain challenges in complex environments. Find out more at www.allers.com That's A-H-L-E-R-S